Hi, everybody. I'm here with my friend Sheldon Kennedy. And as you know, he's an amazing advocate for children's welfare across this country to talk about why it's so important that people in our legal system have the adequate training around the issues of sexual assault. Now, Sheldon, I know that you deal with these issues at the Child Advocacy Center, and you've been an advocate about training people in every walks of life to understand sexual abuse and sexual assault. Can you just talk to us about why it's so important that people that deal with these issues in the court system, or anywhere really, but if in this case, in the court system, understand what the law means when, they're tr when they have to actually be the people that are implementing the law? Well, um, it's great to be with you today, uh, Ron, and, and um, for us, uh, where we focus and what we see is uh, we see the impact that the court systems have uh, on the children and individuals that go through uh, the system. And I think the biggest gap that we see that's uh, been presented to us uh, is a lack of knowledge of the impact of this type of crime. I mean, I think when we look at the law, the law is the law, but I think it's tough to really make strong decisions and the appropriate decisions uh, without understanding its true impact. And when we look at kids, uh, we do we do 150 investigations uh, a month uh, in the city of Calgary. I don't believe those numbers would differ across our country, uh, but we can, we manage to get kids back, getting doing well in school, getting better in their life, and then they enter the court system, and it almost takes them uh, farther back than when they started when they first. Came came through our systems because of the victimization that happens because of the lack of understanding and sensitivity that comes with uh, the way we react, the way we ask questions and the way we govern that courtroom. You know, and that's exactly what we're trying to address through this this uh, private members bill. And it's interesting that you say that because, you know, the law on the books is a good law. The issue is that a lot of people surprisingly actually haven't even been trained in that particular law. Or if they're judges, they may actually not understand the real issues around sexual assault. They may not understand the sexual assault laws. And they're the people that are making these really important decisions that affect children, that affect anyone that are going through um, a, a case, you know, that brings actually, that br that have the people that actually have the courage to bring their case forward. Because as you know, many people never actually go to court because it's just so difficult for them. My question is this, it's so hard for victims to actually go through the court system. And a lot of times they go through the court system and they don't feel like they get justice. But even then, uh, there's this sense that lawyers don't always understand the sensitivities around sexual assault issues, that judges haven't been trained in sexual assault law necessarily. And here they are, holding in their hands a huge part of someone's life. So can you talk about why training is so beneficial and how you've seen through the training that you've been part of advocating for training across the country in all walks of life for people to understand sexual assault and sexual abuse, how that has made a difference and why it's a positive thing? Well, I mean, there is no question that training and knowledge and understanding is the biggest gap in, in our society, uh, not just in the judicial system. Uh, training is significant because if you look at uh, the way perpetrators uh, operate within our communities, they operate in a society's ignorance and indifference. So um, if we look at, you know, the work that we do, I mean, we work with the professionals that actually do the investigations. And what was the biggest gap with them? Well, training. Right. They didn't have the training to know how to properly even investigate or understand and if we look at the science today the science is clear on the impact of you know severe toxic stress environments long term uh, on the development of children's brains and we know that the science tells us that and I think um, it's not pull yourself up by the bootstraps and kids are getting over this if we look at the stats 72% of individuals in treatment centers uh, have disclosed early childhood abuse kids that have been abused are 26 times more likely to experience youth homelessness or 30% higher risk of a high school dropout boys that have been perpetrated within the home are 45 times more likely to perpetrate dating violence I mean the list wow. goes on and we need to connect those dots and those are the things that we need to understand to better make 
to make better decisions Mm -hmm. and understand who's in front of us. Right. Who's really in front of us. And I think, you know, we need to let the laws be the laws, but I think we have to have that understanding uh, of the real impact. It's like, you know, looking at somebody um, that's in front of you that's, you know, been beat up, that's bruised or that has a broken leg. Uh, We can physically see that impact and we point to that as, as, you know, look at the damage that's done. Right. And we're unable to do that uh, with sexual assaults and sexual abuse cases. A lot of times it's invisible and we need to, training is critical to make the invisible visible and have that clarity uh, so we can properly make decisions. And if it's, you know, I think not only is it not only is it, uh, you know, does it have to be uh, a charge or, or you know, uh, they're convicted, but we need to understand that, that the victims in these cases are going to need help. And right. if we don't, if we don't allow that to happen, um, they're going to be the people that we're filling our homeless shelters, filling our prisons, etc. And yeah. I think that's that's the biggest gap that I see in, in all of our systems across this mm-hmm. country. And that being said, I think we've made significant progress as well. Yeah, without a doubt, Sheldon's organization has made significant progress on uh, training teachers, training people that deal with, with kids in sports, like coaches and parents. And, and that makes a huge difference in this whole private member's bill is about training lawyers. Mm -hmm. If they want to become a judge or really encouraging judges that sit on the bench to also get that training so that if somebody's in their courtroom, like you say, in front of them, they understand what's going on. Well, thank you, Sheldon, for this uh, time together. And thank you for all the great work that you do on behalf of all Canadians. Well, thank you, Ron, and thank you for your leadership on this issue. And um, it's inspiring because it wasn't always popular. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Thanks.